Hey there, everybody. Max Rich here. Today, we are talking about acoustic blues, specifically a boogie. And it's the Guitar Boogie by Tommy Emmanuel. Um, it's a pretty massive song. We're going to cover the main feel and the first three choruses of the song, um, which sort of kind of outline everything else in the song, right? It's all sort of a play on, you know, a standard, like, blues shuffle. Um, but it's a really souped up version. And it's not crazy complicated, um, even though it seems like it. It seems like, oh my god, I'll never be able to play that super fast, really ripping, and there's just all kinds of licks. Um, sort of, but sort of not, also. Um, it basically comes down to just repetition, you know? The, the song, what I just played, is really based around a bass, a bass line, you know? <laughs> basically what a bass player would play. And so the thing that makes this so crazy complicated sounding is the fact that he's doing the duty of a bass player and a guitar player, you know? Um, but with the guitar playing portion, he's playing chords most of the time. It's this kind of like... Um <laughs> that's sort of an idea, right? Um, and that's really where the, you know, like, you know, craziness of it is found because you're mimicking two instruments rather than one. If you're just doing the guitar, you might go like... <laughs> something like that, but he's doing both. Um, so, the thing with this comes from the feel, number one. It's got a shuffle feel, so it's not, you know, like, like... Dun 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 dun. It doesn't have that feel, it's got a shuffle. Dun 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 dun. Kinda like Pride and Joy, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Right, that feel. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, da dun, da dun, da dun, right? And that's hugely important. You need your right hand to do that, or your picking hand if you're left handed. And that's a great way to start, <laughs> and it also happens to be the intro of the song, so it's really good. Um, what we're doing, we're basically just vamping on an E power chord. The idea is to get that sharp. So if I slow that down, and what happens is I'm playing down kind of like a palm mute almost. I kind of use gravity and let my hand fall. And then on the upstroke, obviously there's no palm mute because my hand's up in the air. But when I play the next one, my hand kind of falls into place. Like that. And I'm sliding into the beginning of every bar. So, kind of sliding from first fret into second. So that should give you a good feel um, to kind of get in involved in the song because, like I said, um, feel is everything for the blues. It's not about fast, it's not about technical, it's about feel. Um, you could play this and you could play this fast and you could play this technically, but if you don't have the right feel and, you, you're not, and your shuffle's not on, it's just not going to sound good, no matter how fast and how cleanly you play it. It's the feel that makes it sound so incredible. So get that down in your right hand. Make sure you can do that chung a chung a chung a chung a chung a chung a dun 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 um, And do it with a metronome because this is fast, right? So you can't, you know, you can't have like a poor sense of time if you're going to try to 
accomplish this song because it's fast, right? And in order to play fast, you have to have a super constant, like metronomic type of feel in your body and in your hand. You can't, you know, if you take the metronome away and on your timing goes crazy, then the song is going to be like really, really difficult, you know? Um, but if you can keep that pulse. <laughs> If you can keep that going, then your feel is going to be spot on, and then all it takes then is learning the licks, slowing them down, and gradually building them up with a metronome, and anybody could play this, you know? It's just, do you have the time and energy to dedicate to uh, slowing things down and building it back up? Maybe you don't. Maybe you just have to just jump right into it. But uh, I know from my experience teaching it and playing this song that almost every single person in the world has to slow it down first. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to slow it down and teach you the first three choruses of Guitar Boogie. All right, so Tommy Emanuel's Guitar Boogie. This song um, starts with that kind of like E power chord vamp I told you about. Right, let's assume you have that down. I hope you do. It's not, it's not the craziest thing in the world, but the feel is what matters, right? That. Right? So we're going to slow things down and I'm going to play the first bit, um, which is basically just a uh, pretty much just a bass line. So uh, take a listen and then I'll break it down teach it to you. So. craziest part um but when you speed it up of course it gets pretty intense you know i'll slow it down even more and play through it one more time so i'll this time i'll come out of the little vamp so you can get the feel for it start with really common bass groove, right? So we're playing open, fourth fret, and we slide into fourth fret. Second, um, so second on the fifth string, and then we pull off from fourth to second. After that pull off, we play the E, fourth string, E, C sharp, fourth fret, B, second fret, slide into G sharp, and then B, and then open again. So real slow, the first two bars. Basically, let's try it a little faster. Dun ga 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 dun. Right? Really important to get that feel and get it slow. Um, the reason I pull off is because at that really fast speed, it's in, it's pretty difficult and it's unnecessarily difficult to pick that note, um, to do that. So I pull off and then I start the next one on a downbeat or on a downstroke. And then the next one is pretty much the exact same thing, except... Um, instead of hitting this E on the fourth string, we hit an open D. Right? And then, 
um, instead of sliding into the four, we just hit four on, on at the ending of that two bar thing, and then hit on the upstroke an A chord to kind of preempt going into the next A chord, right? It's pretty much a standard 12 bar blues. So um, this bass line riff takes up two bars and then it repeats. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. And one and two and three and four and right and there we are into our A chord right and there it does the same thing same thing just um, the same part as the last two bars um, but on an A chord now so we do the same thing everything up one string so um, So we hit that A to kind of like push our way into that bar, and then an open A, slide into four, two, four, open, four, two, four, so I'll actually slide into four, and then two, and then open, and then an upstroke, so we're into the E, back. we're back into the E now into the sixth bar of the progression. Um, so we start with a downbeat on the low E, and then an upstroke, and then the bass line continues. So... Oh, sorry. There we go. So, um, down on the low E, up on the open strings, and then four, two, four, two, four, two, four, two, open. I'm sorry, uh, four, open, two. There we go. I forgot we were going into the turnaround there. I went back to the beginning accidentally. Um, so, one more time. This time it'll be right, I promise. Uh, here we go. So, we come out of that A, and then we get into the B, which is the beginning of our turnaround. So, two, starting on the B now. Second fret, fifth string. Two, four, open, four, two, open. And we slide into four, hit second fret, next string, and then slide in again, and then hit it again. And then the last bit. So open and then we slide like a long slide into 12. So it's bum doop 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 bum. And basically all I'm doing is either hitting an open string or slide. Alright, so I'll play that whole thing, the whole first 12 bars, real slow. Sounds like this, coming out of the vamp. say the most complicated part about this is that that downbeat and then the upbeat on the open strings after the A um, yeah. right down up that's the mo that's in my mind the hardest bit and so what I would do I would slide practice sliding 
um, into that four on the fifth string, up stroke on the two, down on the open, up stroke on the open. So when you practice it, you practice that over and over and then it kind of becomes natural. Right? That kind of an idea. So if I were to play this a little faster with the feel, sounds like this. I'm sorry. There we go. Like I said, take it slow. Make sure you can get each little two bar section because they're really similar. Um, they're almost identical. It's just a few little notes that change, which is why it can get a little confusing. Um, there are tabs there to help you out, you know, um, but don't pump up the speed right away. Take it nice and slow. Right, that kind of a speed. So you can get that feel, you can get that right hand. Dum da dum da dum da dum da dum. Right? Very, very important to get that feel. Very important to get that right hand moving so that you don't have to think about it. It's just left hand. It's just listening at that point. So work with this feel. Work with that little beginning. Um, the next 12 bars get slightly more complicated and it moves along from there. So stick around. Alright, so moving into the next bit, um, we take that same idea of using a bass line that um right but we're gonna move it now right and that's gonna be the kind of foundation so now open four seven four seven four seven four instead of playing it there now. Um, and the reason is, uh, I'll, go, I'll go ahead and I'll play this next section at a slow tempo for you so you can kind of see what I'm doing and uh, check it out. Sounds like this. Uh, coming from the turnaround where we were before, so I'll start on the beat. Um, kind of like uh, real heavy on the downbeat and it starts with this da -da 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 and what we're doing we're just kind of up down up on the high strings and then a low string low and then up stroke on a high string and that that downbeat that palm muted downbeat um, the reason I palm muted is to separate the sound of the bass, because the bass has this lot, like, you know, like, um, real fleshy, fat, round sound, right? And guitar and comping specifically has a higher, brighter sound. So I like to try to vary that rather than do this, you know. Right? Where everything is the same volume, it totally loses effect. So if you can palm mute on the bass notes, and then whether you're hitting down or up, but the chords should be loose and bright while the bass notes are sort of palm muted. Not like dead note, but palm muted. So, um, so up, down, up, and then the bar starts. Down, up. So, so down, up, four, seven, four, and then we hit our E9 chord, which is basically seven, six, seven, seven. So, and we just 
climb back down the bass. And on the next one, we slide into that from the fret before. And then another upstroke on the open up, uh, high strings. And then it's the same bass note. Like that. So that takes up two bars. So let me kind of play just the E section, those first four bars of the second chorus. Now we go into the A, which is the same exact feel. So we slide into the A. We slide into the A7, which is 5, 7, 5, 6. And then hit open, uh, the same open strings on top. And then after that, So we're basically playing A, and then the bass line is C sharp, E, F sharp, G, F sharp, E, C, right? And what I'm doing, I'm playing C sharp with my pinky ninth fret, and then on the next string I'm playing 7, 8, 9, 8, I'm sorry, 7, 9, 10, 9, right? But when I get to this 10th fret with my pinky, I play a G major chord, which is pinky on 10, and then 9, 7, 8. So... And then climb back down. the feel to get that kind of like gravity in your hand where you're bum 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 dunk a dunk a dunk that shuffle feel has to be there throughout the whole thing so um After we climb down from our G, we've hit a low E and then an E9. And then continue our E bass line. Four, seven, four, seven. And then right after that, so. spend the next bar um, before the turnaround climbing up to the turnaround so we go uh, from uh, at well I'll start from the A so you can kind of hear it so um, coming out of the A I hit open and then an E9 and then Four, seven, four, seven, and then right after that seven, I just take my my dominant seven chord, like, and just climb up to my B. So from the fourth fret, and then I continue my bass line, and then or after the climb up. Two hits on B, and then I hit uh, on the sixth string. I hit nine, ten, nine, seven, five, four, two, and then open. Right, so it's like uh, coming out of the A once again.
And then, okay, so we hit that, we come out of a... That's basically just an E chord. And I'm hitting the low, and then the high. I'm hitting low, high, low, high, low, high. But the rhythm is different. So it's down, up, up, down, down, up. So it's like... And then, after that... We basically climb up... Like with our E9 chord from 4 frets below, except we have the bass note. climbing up on the 6th string. And then when we hit the E9 on the 4th one, then we switch to the 5th string. So the bass on that climb up, G sharp, A, A sharp, E. Right like that. So real, kind of from, from the beginning of that second section, sounds like this. pick up starting now uh, we are going to go into the third chorus the last chorus and by now you could tell things have gotten a bit more complicated we're no longer just playing bass lines we're playing bass lines with chord hits and if you can capture that feel it's huge man you can do it in any key I mean E is really easy because you can use open strings but um, that that feel right that's where it's at you know you get this um uh, there the whole time you know and even if you slow it all the way down still has to be there so make sure you're practicing this with a metronome at a slow tempo and get that get that feel down it's only gonna help it's gonna make learning this way way easier I promise Was the uh, that was the whole thing and where we left off um, was the beginning of the last chorus so we climbed up um, to to it from from there right that little uh, dominant nine shape with the G sharp in the bass right and then um, the main idea in this one is this um, this kind of push. Huh, kind of hit a funky note in there. Um, but what it comes down to is that. So as we climb up and we hit this, the E9, basically doing that where we're hitting an E9 and the first time we only hit it once and then an open 
and then G sharp, B, G sharp. And then the three times following, we hit it twice. So it's like... And we do the same thing on the A. Um, it's actually all fairly, fairly simplistic. Um, So um, the bass line is basically going where we're playing um, on the E, we're playing 4-7-4 four, four, uh, in the bass on the low 6 string. And then when we get to the A, we're playing F sharp, E, F sharp. And then um, after the A, that happens twice. We do the E again, and then the second time after that, we do that climb up. So there's the E9, and then open, and then climb up to the B7. ends the same way as the previous one. Um, so this one is really uh, kind of just basically a play on the second one, which is a play on the first one. Um, and on and on it goes. Uh, so let me just, I'll just recap um, real slow going through this third chorus. So coming out of that climb up from before. Um, And then, of course, the song goes on for another, like, four minutes or something. Um, and it's all based, based around that feel. Um, the, uh, the main thing with this that you, wanna, that you, that you really want to get, like I keep stressing, is that... That dun ka 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 dun It's a shuffle feel. And that is something that you have to get. If you want to play blues, that's maybe harder than any lick or any chord or any progression or anything like that is really mastering that feel. You know, there aren't a huge number of guitar players who have really intensely solid timing, but Tommy Emmanuel is definitely one of them. Um, and this song, uh, for all its flash and speed and everything, I hope you can see now, when you break it down, is it real complicated? If you make it slow... <laughs> It's really kind of, there's not much to it. Right? That's all the guitar is doing, and the bass is. Um, right? That's it. You just put them together, and then all of a sudden it sounds like something, you know? So it's a very bluesy thing to do, you know? If, like I mentioned Stevie Ray Vaughan um, uh, in the song Pride and Joy, he does that. the bass line, right? And then the... That would be the guitar part, right? You put them together and all of a sudden you have something pretty intense sounding. Um, so that's really all this is. The licks and stuff that happen later are standard blues licks. There's nothing real crazy about them. You know, this like... You know, that sort of stuff. Um, really major pentatonic blues, you know? Uh, Hopefully by now you've been exposed enough to the blues that you can come up with some of your own um, blues licks or cops in the mind that I've showed you. Um, but when you're dealing with this tune, feel is number one. Beyond anything else. It's that. And once you get that, then shifting in and out of chords, you know, that sort of thing becomes sort of second nature. Um, you want to always be thinking ahead of where you are than, rather than where you are at that specific moment. You know, if I'm like um, uh, doing... Do, 
during that whole last bar, I was headed there to that B7, right? I'm not thinking like, I'm on E now, G sharp, B, G sharp, E, open, climb up, you know? I, I don't think that. I think where I'm headed, where that target note is, where that accented note is, and how do I get there, you know? Um, it's like a, it's a real common thing. You hear chromatic movement in the blues all the time, you know, like a... That... That's where I'm headed. And how I get there... By leading into it, right? So if you match the, the feel, and you can really get that solid feel, then you can get that target note idea where, you know, I know where I'm headed, I know what note I'm trying to get to, how you get there, if your feel is solid and you know what target note you need to do, you can get there chromatically, you can get there in a scale, you can get there with a lick, but it's the feel and, and the solid, solid rhythm and good timing that's going to make it stand out. So, once again, do this with a metronome, work it from a slow speed up to a fast speed, and then you'll be playing guitar boogie in no time.